Today we have this interesting Halloween costume for the Gaussian integral. It's the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared, that's your classic Gaussian term, times e to the negative 1 by x squared, which is a more twisted version of the Gaussian term. And the resemblance between this structure and the classic structure, that is the Gaussian integral, the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx equals root pi, this motivates us to somehow convert the structure we have into the classic Gaussian structure. And that's actually a pretty good strategy. But how exactly do we execute that strategy? Well, first things first, for reference purposes, we call our integral i. And a good way to start would be to multiply the two exponential terms and write this as the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared plus 1 by x squared dx, where I've just factored out a negative sign. Okay, so far so good. And wait, I may have messed up the zoom over here. Uh, not sure. Anyway, it's fine. It's perfectly fine now. So this is what the target integral looks like. But comparing it with your Gaussian integral, we see that what we need is the argument of the exponential function to be the negative of something squared. But this is not exactly the negative of something squared. How can I convert this into something squared? Well, that's actually pretty easy. But before I get to that, let's notice that the integrand is an even function of x. So let me just get that out of the way. Instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity, we could just integrate from 0 to infinity and double the result. So we have i equal to twice the integral of e to the negative x squared plus 1 by x squared dx. And now for the question of how exactly do I convert the argument of the exponential function in the target integral into something more like the argument in the Gaussian integral. Well, notice first up that since x squared plus 1 by x squared minus 2 equals x minus 1 by x squared, then this implies that I can write i as twice the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus 1 by x squared plus 2. Okay, cool. And let me just break down the argument of the exponential function some more. I can write this as twice the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus 1 by x squared times e to the negative 2. Now notice that you finally have e to the negative of something squared. And e to the negative 2 is just a constant, so this implies that my new structure for i, the simplified version, is 2 by e squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus 1 by x squared dx, which is cool, but it's still a bit off in comparison to the actual Gaussian integral because we have this negative 1 by x thing as well. So how exactly do I deal with that? Well, since we have 1 by x anyway, so the symmetry for the argument of the exponential function gives us a nice hint. We could invoke the substitution of letting x equal 1 by u and see how it goes. Now this implies that dx would be negative 1 by u squared du. And as x approaches 0 from the right, we have u approaching infinity, positive infinity. And as x approaches infinity, obviously u will approach 0. So this implies that i equals 2 by e squared times the integral now from infinity to 0, which looks incredibly weird, of e to the negative 1 by u minus u squared times negative 1 by u squared du. And of course, we can get rid of this extra negative sign by switching up the limits of integration. So we have 2 by e squared 
times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u minus 1 by u whole squared. We can switch up the order of the terms here because, well, everything's squared. And we now have this 1 by u squared term and du, of course. So this is a new structure for the target integral i, but what was the other structure? Now the structures in white and orange both represent the same target integral i. And for the structure in white, we could just rename all the u's back to x, because, well, that would not alter the structure of the integral. So yeah, it's just a dummy variable, so renaming it doesn't do any harm. So we have two by e squared, times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus 1 by x squared times 1 by x squared integration with respect to x. So now we have the structure in blue and the structure in orange both representing the same target integral i. So let's just add them up and see what happens. Normally when we add up different versions of the same integral, we always get something nice. And that's the case here as well. So we have 2 times i being equal to, we have this common factor of 2 by e squared, and we have this linearity of the integration operator. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity. Again, we can factor out this common term of e to the negative x minus 1 by x squared times 1 plus 1 by x squared left dx. And this is pretty cool. This is a very nice structure to work with. Why? Well, because of the presence of this term next to the differential element. This term here is quite helpful because if we make a substitution of letting the argument of the exponential function now, that is x minus 1 by x equal to some other variable, call it t, then this implies that 1 plus 1 by x squared dx equals dt, which is pretty cool. And as x approaches 0 from the right, we have 0 minus something approaching infinity. So that means t would be approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches infinity, we have something approaching infinity minus something approaching 0. So that is t approaching positive infinity. So all of this is really cool, and the twos cancel out pretty nicely as well. So that means i in the t world is now 1 by e squared times the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative t squared. And this whole thing is just your differential element, dt. So we have dt here. And what do we have the classic Gaussian integral that we know evaluates out to root pi. So that means this spooky Gaussian version has a very beautiful result. We conclude that the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared times e to the negative 1 by x squared dx equals root pi by e squared. A very beautiful result indeed involving both our favorite transcendentals. And another thing I like about this is that we have pi to the 1 by 2 and e squared. So yeah, I think that's a very nice contrast. I'm terribly sorry, I had to extend my stay a bit. So I've been away from doing math for YouTube. But I'm back, I enjoyed my travel quite a bit, especially the last few, the last few days of my stays at various places, and I spent a lot of time on the beach as well, which was pretty fun. Yeah, the waves and all that. So I really did enjoy my travels this time, although I'm not exactly a very outgoing person, but whenever I do travel, I tend to enjoy it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.